tutorial on how to edit a Matterport space you just got back. Let's get started. Once I open it, I go directly to the edit, which is up here on the right. Click edit. Now these are the basic steps I do to a standard residential property. So once I open it up, I start to the far right and I hit my start location and I click the preview of the start location to see how my dollhouse looks and to see how it flies in. Now, obviously I do not want to start with this view. Usually I want to be in the kitchen, showing the kitchen. So I'm going to set up my camera angle, make sure everything's level. And I'm going to hit set. Once it is set, I am going to preview once again to make sure it looks good flying in. Everything looks good. And then I, I pop out while I'm in this position and I look and see if there's anything I want to trim out. So the uh, dollhouse looks really good. So right over here, I see right away there was a trim missed when we uploaded. So I am going to get rid of that right there. Go to my far right to the trim tool. So on the top here, you got your top view. So straight down view, I can see that where I need to trim over here. So then when you hit the side, you get the exact side of what you're looking at. And there's another way to see that trim. And then you got the 3D and then you can move that around. And basically it's the dollhouse because it's right there, right on the side. I'm going to click side and then I'm going to trim right there. So you go to the plus side and then you have three different position scale rotation that you can turn this box into right now it's position so it'll just move left and right for some reason it is not clicking so we will hit scale scale is obvious it makes the size a little bit different and instead of the position for some reason position wasn't letting me move obviously position is moving the whole thing let me try position one more time see if it'll let me now there we go so position moves the whole shape of the box left right up down and it's clicking back there. So I'm gonna do scale, perfect. And then rotation, if I want to rotate it one direction or the other, just trim it off to make it look good. You got the rotation that can get that specific. All right, I wanna go back to 3D, make sure I didn't crop off anything too much. I'm gonna hit this check mark, it makes that disappear and looks pretty good the next thing i do is i go to the side this specifically they just wanted the straight up matterport so we're going to skip all this information and then go to 3d scan a really good thing is how different levels that you charge one is people just walking through another is you can label tag things add links that's a lot more time consuming so you have you should have different charges at different levels the end of this video i will show how those work all right so then i hit Go to my scans, 3D scans, and this is where I remove all the extra scans that you don't need. Right away, I go to the floor plan view, and then I switch it to floor one, if that's where I started. And then I click over here, scan one. I love this view because I can see right where all the extra scans are. And for the most part, I can hide all the scans without having to spend too much time walking around the tour. So number one, I actually don't need because that's right by the garage door and you don't want to be too close to something like that. Uh, number two is good. Number three and four I do not need because I want people to be able to walk. So they click here, they go into the laundry room and then they'll be able to click on the garage door to go out to that picture I'm going to attach here in a little bit. All right, so we went from seven to eight and then back out to realign at nine. So we're gonna hide number nine because we don't need seven and nine together. 10, 62, 63, 64 are all lined and 11. So we don't need 11. We do need 12. And then I'll explain how to do the stairs when we go back. So we do need 12. 13 is a stop between two walls. We do not need 13. So we're gonna to go to 12 and then we're gonna shoot over to 14. And the reason I do the start location first is so I don't accidentally hide the scan that I wanna use for start location. 19, let's take a look at it because it's close to the stove and the sink. So I think that'll be, even though it's close to everything, I think it'll be a good one to keep because it does a great view, shows all the details. The sink is clean, so we will keep number 19. 
go back to the floor and I will continue on. So this is a tough one because we have this couch here and usually we don't want to be so close to the couch and our scan but so I'll keep number 30 and I'll hide 29 so right here and when you're down at this level you can click the ones that you want to hide while you're on it on 30 I'm gonna keep it 31 I'm gonna hide 32 I'm gonna hide the reason I'm hiding these is because you don't need somebody walking through does not need to come over here and look at this they just need the whole general view of the house floor plan views so I can see what we got so when you're looking at it like this the ones that are shaded in a little bit are the ones you're keeping and the ones that aren't shaded in with a light X are the ones you're hiding So after we scanned these, we went back to the stairs. That's why it's important when you're standing in front of stairs or places you might go back to. Because when we were at 61, and then we jumped to 62, we made sure that it lined up. If, it, if this 62 didn't go onto that first step, we would have went back down here around where 10 was and try to realign it there. What Matterport tries to do is from your last scan, so this is 61, number 62, it tries to line it up here, but if it can't, if it doesn't make sense, it's going to search all over the house for the next location that matches a scan. 10, 62, 63, 64 are all linked together. We do not need all those. And then let's see where 65 is. Let's show all the floors. 65 so i'm gonna get rid of 64 and then i'm going to come down here and see if i can go all the way to 65 with just clicking up there i can so i'll probably leave it like that say because you don't need to necessarily take each step while you're walking up So here, okay, here's an interesting one. So we go into a bathroom over here. So let's go back down here. Perfect. So 87, I was wondering if I couldn't see this 90 from 88, then I would have kept 89. But I like, here's why I like the one closer to the door better. If I do this shot, I could see right to left, like a straight on shot, but I can't see the whole room so if I do the angled shot, I can see the computer and this screen over here. But like in real estate photography, if you're more in the corner, you can see I can see the whole computer and the whole screen over here. So I like this shot better, it shows it bigger and better. And so I'm going to hide 89 and I'm going to go into 90. 90 will work because I can see 88. So I don't have to worry about it. And if you find me this helpful, informative, make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, thumbs up. And if you have any questions, definitely comment. To the floor plan view and shoot this back out. Now, once you're done with the scans, I like to preview and then I'll walk through the whole house making sure that it actually works and there's no glitches i'm able to go into every room uh, and go to the right scans you can see all the scans in between are gone you only see the ones that we kept shown Hit edit again up at the top right your next thing are the 360 photos you took or 360 captures uh, this is a pretty nice backyard, also had a balcony and other things. We made sure to capture all those so we could attach them to the basic floor plan. If you want to know how to go outside doing a Matterport, follow this link there. So the next, so what you do is you drag your 360 photos onto your 
floor plan. So what you want to do is show the floor, if it's a two-story, like in this case with the balcony, that first picture was up on the balcony. And that was right in this area. And the doorway was through this office. So you take it, you drag it over, and let go, and then you move it around. If you're far away, it'll put it pretty much put it anywhere you want. You just the, if it's jumpy, the closer you get to where you want it, the more chances you are you having centered where you want it. So you let go once it's clicked. Then you click it again. You have this two little arrows to change the direction, and uh, this door should be right here. So it was taken facing the wrong direction. It's habit when you're taking a picture of a view that you want the lens facing out towards that view. But if your door is facing that way and your view is that way, you still want to have the side of your camera facing the view. On the Theta, the button is actually the back. So you want the back of your camera facing the door that you're coming out of when you're attaching these photos. I'll show you why. All right, so we're gonna turn this so the door is facing right there and then we'll come down here and see how it puts that 360 button right there you click that and then you're outside now normally if you take it the way I mentioned you will see it'll be like you walked right through facing that way but since we took it a little crooked we're seeing that view and our walking guy is in the wrong spot he is not right here if we had taken the picture with the camera facing the correct way, that walking guy would be right there. We could play with the adjustments. Let's go back inside. Click the 360 and click this one again. And then turn it. So if I turn this, like that, we can keep going back and forth and playing with it until we are in the right position. I went the wrong way. My guy is further out. So anyway, if you do the picture the correct way, it will line up a lot quicker than that. Let's move on to the next one. All my other shots are on the first floor. So on the bottom left here, I'm going to change to floor one. So it attaches to the right floor easily. This is a pool area. We took this picture pretty much out here. So we'll see where it lines up our 360. It's leaking. Oh, for some reason it's showing all the floors again. For some reason it's leaking right there on the dining room. There we go. That's what we wanted. Go in here. Hit the 360 and then it came out to the right spot. So we should be pretty close to the walking. Perfect. It still shows floor one. And I'll just drag this number three over here. So that's the basics of the 360 scans. I'll go through and do them all real quick. Yeah, I forgot we did not do a 360 of inside this garage because they were keeping their dogs out there. So what you do to show people in this situation uh, when you can't do the 360 capture, this is where the tags come in handy. So you click tags, hit the plus sign, and you put the tag on the door where you want it. Type in what it is behind that door, which is a garage. If you want to add a description like uh, anything in the garage specifically you can do that there but we will upload a file of this garage or two pictures of the garage just so you can see what that looks like and there you go so when the client goes to preview they can see what the garage looks like from the photos and there you go and then a little bit further into this video I'm going to show you what this tag is all about Okay, the last thing I do is I go through and blur anything that needs to be blurred in case I got myself in a reflection of a reflection or if somebody was outside that I didn't see when I was hiding and taking a picture, I'll blur them out. So in this case, uh, we are going to go to blur. It's on the almost the last one on the right. And then it'll have a, some suggestions of things to blur. 
like this frame right here. So that might be one of the suggestions of what they are going to automatically blur. So it does face detection, obviously. You do not need to hide a doll face. See that, now these are ones that need to be blurred. You wanna hit the plus sign and just blur the people out. So you get the point of the blur, go through, you can choose the accept, the, the pre-selected, or you can blur your own stuff. And uh, once I finish with that, I continue on, I exit, and then I get ready for the delivery. And if you notice there, uh, if you leave without saving your blurs, it'll double check, so you never have to worry about if you've accidentally hit that exit button, it'll double check for you to save those blurs. So the next thing I do is I fill in the details. This is all I put in this section is I name it. So it's something that stands out, not just the address. I put their name, phone number, email, and their contact information. I do not fill in the description unless they request that I do that. And I put in the full address. Once that is all done, I hit save. And then I go to share. And then depending on who the client is, if they want it unlisted or public, usually they want it public, or if they decide they want it, I've never had anybody want it private, password protected or unlisted, but those are options you have if for some reason you need to send it to them to preview, etc. But I hit public, and then you can add tags to the tour if you want. I do not do that on the basic, but, I, but what I do do, what you need to make sure you do, is you copy a branded link and you email that link to them. So you just copy that, paste it in your email, and then you send them the MLS ready link. You copy that and you paste that in the email and make sure to label each of them differently. Because if you are doing the branded link, let me show you that right now. When it gets open, it says their name, the brokerage information, and they're not allowed to have that on an MLS listing. So you want to be able to send them both, one, so they can advertise themselves and promote their own brand, and two, they can advertise the house and share it on the MLS. Now, if you stuck with me this long, here is a quick bonus on the other parts of the tour or the editing software. So you got labels. So if you want to label anything, you just hit the plus sign and you want to label the kitchen. It's great, this is great for floor plans. If you're getting the floor plan made, you can name the room, like the company I use, Capture.io, will name the rooms what I want them named. And they do an amazing job, link below, but they do an amazing job turning your floor plans into 2D and 3D floor plans. Here's a video on something they did for me recently. It's amazing. So, that, so that, that's the labels, you get the idea. You can go to floor one, floor two, name all your rooms, label everything. So when people are looking at it in the floor plan view or the dollhouse view, they still pop up so they know exactly what that is. Then you got a measurement tool. You can uh, click a different area, hit the plus sign. You can see how big an area is. So that's seven foot across on that. But never been requested the client can actually do that on their end so there's no reason for us to be able to do it so on this this is pretty good if you have a client that wants a video walkthrough or pre walkthrough so let's say i want to show off the house but let's start from a good position so let's stay here so this is going to be our starting position i'm going to hit add highlight and on the bottom left it's going to show that highlight pop up I'll add two more positions real quick and add this highlight here facing this direction. And once it pops up, uh, let's go to, this will be interesting when I go from the master upstairs. So let's just show this one, add highlights. And now I'm gonna go to floor two. We'll show this as a highlight. All right, we did a quick, really quick highlight. If we do a preview showing the auto settings, which are a slideshow and it automatically pans 35 degrees. So you hit preview, this will pan like a slideshow. It'll do a little 35 degree pan, going to the right apparently. 
It'll do a 35 degree pan each room and it shows it as a slideshow. So what I like to do is edit that so it is a walkthrough and then I decide if it goes left or right and how big of a pan I want and then I apply to all. The walkthrough is good but you definitely have to preview it before you accept it because if you walk through all the different things you're going to start going through walls so you might want to mix up the slideshow and walkthrough. I can apply the walkthrough to them all and let's see what that looks like. So it does your pan and then it acts like it's walking to the next position and then it's going to realign to your starting position. And then it's basically walking to each scan in between where you decided to walk. Now it did pretty good. There was no really big parallaxing or anything like that. So let's see how it does when we go back up the stairs. So right there is some issues. So you might want to do a walking position to miss going through the island, but it does a pretty good job. Now this would be great for like a quick social media video you create for your clients, a quick post. You could speed ramp it, put music to it. All right, so that's the two differences on walkthroughs. It can be really helpful in upselling your Matterports, but if you don't have enough time to do that, again, you could use capture.io. They will build that for you. They'll do a lot of stuff and you even get a website through them to create that specific kind of walkthrough and share with your clients. It's a great upsell. And then you got your tags. So if there is, especially on a custom home, let's say this couch is an antique couch and then you save that and then you want to preview. Let's go back to that section. And then when you click it, all that information is there they could click the link share it etc all right let's go back to edit and notes is just basically if you're working with somebody and they're putting together the tour you want to make a note send them back and forth you guys can talk if you guys are working on your matterport together and one more extra bonus actually i did a video about this separately uh, but if you get to a point where you are doing high-end matterports you're using the Pro 3, you're spending the money, clients are spending the money, and you don't want shadows or reflections of people or of things, watch this video here. It'll show you how you can get rid of that and put it back. You can take that scan out and you put it back in without that shadow. It now works on all iOS products and Android products. Comment below if you want me to redo the whole video on that. I have it in the works, but it's not on the top list. Not sure how many people are interested in that specific of Matterport editing. Have a great day. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.